What's up guys? So today I wanted to show you how to make a track in the style of Ariana Grande. Cause friends don't look like I do You gon' realize soon If you wanna leave somebody as bad as me Then you better know the consequences of I'm not gonna miss you, I'm not gonna call Kiss another people, I'm gonna make you watch I'm not gonna So I'm going to show the sounds of a track I produced but I've muted all the vocals and I'm just going to dig into the track with you guys. Here's a little bit of the chorus. So in my experience, the first thing that I do when I am building a track in this pop R&B style is I work on the beat first. So usually I start with a kick and a snare and then fill in percussion as the rest of the track develops. So the kick pattern is the first thing I think about. So we are in 94 beats per minute here. So if I just play, you know, just the click. So we ta 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 ta. The first thing I think about is, okay, what do I want my kick to do within those parameters? So it could be do, do, do. It could be do, 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 do. It could be do, 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 do. And many, many different combinations. I realized that was really funny. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> a lot of the times if I don't know, if I'm not sure, I might reference a few other songs. I might chat with the artists that I'm with and see what they're really gravitating towards. It also depends on if there's already a melody going or if this is just fresh. There's just this gig and that's it. And a lot of the times I change it later too. So I don't get hung up on it. I just pick something that feels right and roll with it. The majority of the time, the snare is going to be on the two and the four. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, snare, snare. Pretty self-explanatory. Not always, no rules in music, but the majority of the time with this type of music, that's what's going to happen. So I'm going to isolate just the kick and the snare for you guys right here. So we got the boom, boom, ba, boom, boom. A lot of the times I pick that pattern when I want there to be a little bit of power. Almost like in my mind, it reminds me of like, we will, we will rock you, right? Just like create that like boom, boom kick. It immediately creates that feeling of power. I don't know how else to describe it. So a lot of the times when I do the one, two kick is that's why. So and a helpful trick with a kick is to use MIDI for it, a lot of the times I end up using just dragging in a wave sample, but it's a little bit harder to replace it in the end. And I usually always replace what I picked in the beginning in the end, just because I'm mixing and I'm hearing how everything sounds together. And most of the time I'm like, mm, that kick wasn't right. So if I solo this, you can hear just the sound of this kick, you know, it's obviously like a drum machine kick. What's nice about it, it's got a really nice bottom end. It's also got a great little attack on it, which is really helpful if you've got a thick mix and you're trying to get something to cut through. And you can see right here, I had three different audio versions of the kick that I was trying out before. And finally, I was just like, fuck it. <laughs> and I used the MIDI and just kind of kept dropping in different samples. I'll show you guys how to do this. Like, here's I have like a kick folder of kicks I really like. You know, you could just drag it in and suddenly it replaces it, which is really nice. This is what I have going on for the snare. Some people might roast me for layering so much. I don't care. I like how this sounds. I usually layer like three or four snares and I usually layer extra hits on like a two and a four just to give it a little bit of variation and a little bit of power. If you can hear right here, like this is layered in just on twos. It's a clap just to add a little bit of something else. And there's a one layer on the four as well. Oh, it's like an organic clap with a bit of tambourine. You can really play with this to make your snare more interesting. Otherwise, if you just use like one thing, it's a lot of the times that sounds kind of robotic. So let's move on to the rest of the drums. I'm going to solo everything but the kick and the snare now. <laughs> 
And this is cool. This reminds me of like, live fast, die young, bad girls do. Well, it's like a little bit like that bongo situation, but faster, obviously. I, a lot of the times it's really fun for me to solo stuff because I don't often solo the group like that. So I don't even know what that sounds like. And immediately I'm like, ooh, I want to like sample this and reuse this. But anyway, I'll go through what is in here really quickly. So I've talked about this before in other videos, but I really like to use stomps as thickeners for kicks and as impacts. So this is um, from the Nathan Chapman, who's an amazing country music producer. This is from his pack on Splice. It's just so organic and cool. I love it. Then we've got the 808 hack right here. I do have a tip on how to create the right hat for trap and pop and R&B and all that kind of stuff. So what you want to do, if you really don't know what pattern you're going to do, just put it on 16th notes, just make like a clean and then start taking away hits and see what feels nice and what doesn't. And then start adding hits like triplets, um, like, uh, 64th notes, you know, a little stuff kind of stuff so you can just play with it but start with the 16th notes because that's the easiest way to just get a jump start get a little bit of percussion i really like using organic type percussion because i don't like my songs to sound super super like processed and synthy and like fake sometimes that's good it's just you know not my preference so I, a lot of the times i'll look for like organic claps or little like bongos just anything that sounds natural so that's the point of those things in there. These are just little snare rolls that are nice little burst of energy. A little uh, fill, snare, like an 808 snare fill. Mm, properly, this would be a piccolo snare, actually. <laughs> Sometimes I just call it 808 snare, which is not proper, but eh, who cares? Got little bursts of percussion right here. You guys can see, you know, I layered three different things right here. Like a little tambourine and then what is this like a, it almost sounds like somebody tapping on a desk or something so and that's kind of the thing is like you want to layer a lot of sounds if you hear a sound and you're like i like the rhythmic pattern of this but i'm not sure about the sound you can always replace the sound or you can thicken the sound with something else so now i'm going to show you guys the instruments that are involved in this chorus section of this track <laughs> things layered. Let's see what the main things are. We've got a pad on Serum. Um, I've put Tremolator on it to give it the tremolo effect because I just wanted a little bit of movement. I didn't want it just to hold. Got little plugs really high up top. A lot of the times I like to produce my instrumental section of the track like that. I think of the whole spectrum. Obviously, the bass covers the bottom, but I like to think about what's going to be on top, what's going to be in the lower mids, what's going to be in the upper mids. Uh, I mean, in yeah, in like the upper mids or just the mids. And I go from that sort of standpoint, and then I can get creative and be like, oh, I hear a little bell up top or a little block like that. This I can see is actually a cello plug with our C20 retro color, a bit of wobble on it just to create that detune effect and just noise and a little bit of other effects. So I've got a synth that's swoops. I can't really think of a more eloquent name for what it does. And I've got a similar movement going on in a very high shimmery pad, again, to fill out a bit of that top end of the spectrum because what I showed you guys before, the high, the plug, it's different rhythmically. So it's stabby and this is washy, so they work together. Then I got little stabs of just um, samples. A little vocal sample in there used as an instrument. So, and of course I've got the bass. Just follows pretty much the base of the pads. So that 
was pretty much the chorus section of this track. Now I'm going to show you guys a bit of the verse. So I've noticed in a lot of Ariana tracks and similar pop R&B tracks, the piece de resistance of the verse, other than the vocal, is a detuned synth. A lot of the times it's a pluck, sometimes it's sort of a detuned pad, washier, word, not word, sound. Sometimes it's even a vocal sample used as an instrument. So in here I'm doing a couple of these techniques. So what this is, this is all vocals actually, it's all sort of like screwed with detuned type of vocals. So um, the pad is created using vocal synth. Which is really interesting because if you mute the vocal synth, this is what it was. Which is really interesting, it really sounds nothing like what happens when you do put on the vocal synth. Because it's taken these chords right here underneath it and applying them to this. So, but I did use that melody, this. Wow, I don't have any words today. Ignore me. Uh, but I use that. I use that melody to um, also create accents. So, and being a singer, <laughs> not that I demonstrated it just now, I did not, uh, but being able to sing, it really does help with this genre because a lot of the times I'll just sample my own voice. A lot of the times it's not even when the artist is here, like I'll just use my voice as an instrument because I hear how sort of I want it, want it to sound. So I just go ahead and do it. So, and that's basically, I just sang that little lick uh, and then created the vocal synth out of it. And then there's a little washed piano underneath it just for um, just for strengthening that chord. So that's the idea for the verse. You do want to develop it more than that. I mean, that was very deliberately done super sparsely because her vocal was um, the lead, really, like the focus of the verse. And the second verse, I did add some percussion. <laughs> You know, you want to think of it dynamically. Obviously, you don't want every section to be the same. Uh, you do want to build as the song builds. So, and that's basically like the really quick overview of how to create this type of song. I'm going to play a little bit of the song on Spotify just so you guys can hear the final product. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video. You got yourself into You're playing dangerous games With your heart Let's just be friends Could be hard for you Cause friends don't look like I do You gon' realize soon If you want